So I think quite a few people would like to think that the science you see in films is kind of at least a little bit realistic, but it's not always the case, is it? <laughs> no, definitely not. Like, there's even people that actually believe that the science used in CSI is, you know, fully real, and this whole enhance thing, enhance, is uh, an actual button that you press whenever <laughs> trying to make an image look better. Now, I've had to explain that to my mum so many times, so <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you said that. Uh, but yeah, one of the one of the things that comes up for me a lot, and it annoys me beyond all the others, and most people do actually know this now, but there is no sound in space. So what that means is all sci-fi films that you've seen massive space battles with explosions and the engine sounds and all that, you wouldn't be able to hear any of those sounds in a in a real space battle. God, that's quite bizarre. I think there's probably room for something to have a space battle with no sound whatsoever. Maybe the, something a bit more realistic. The only show, and I absolutely love it for it, that does it is uh, Firefly. There is no sound on anything in space. The only time you have sound outside of the spacecraft is whenever it's landing on a planet or something. So it has like an atmosphere or something like that. Yeah, yeah, because sound is just a vibration and there is nothing for the... There's no, no particles for, to vibrate in space. Yeah, yeah, there's no there's no particles in space to for it to vibrate with and it means there is no sound in space. And that was the first thing. The next thing is another one that gets on my nerves all the time is, uh, you know... You see the damsel in distress falling from the Empire State Building all the way down. And just before she hits the ground, Batman or Superman or anyone comes in and swoops down and catches them before they hit the ground. Okay, tell me more about this one. Yeah, they would still not be alive. Why is that? Well, the momentum that they gain going down all those flights of stairs would mean that they would have, you know, the the inertia and all that sort of stuff and the G-force, once they've been suddenly stopped... All of their organs are just going to come flying out. That's that's too much information, I think. A little <laughs> bit, oh, that, that's, yeah. that's heartbreaking. Imagine going to all that effort to catch the da- Amazon in stress and then they, didn't make it anyway. Yeah, they sort of just break, essentially. It's it's not the hitting the ground that, that actually kills the person. It's the sudden stop. <laughs> if it's... It's the same for if you were to fall from the same height into the sea, it would be the same sort of scenario. You'd be dead. You'd break all your bones. So how how could I survive in that sort of situation? I've just got to slow down yeah, very you to, slowly. You have to, well, yeah, that's it exactly. Even parachutes sometimes can cause um, bones to break if you are going too quickly when you release the parachute. And it's very, very dangerous to be moving very quickly and then suddenly stopping. Okay. One of the other ones as well, Armageddon. Michael Bay. God, he just he doesn't care, does he? <laughs> Why would he care? Why would he? Yeah. He's he's probably the the main suspect of a lot of these. Yeah, yeah. He's 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 hit all of the all of the things that I hate as far as bad science and films goes. But Armageddon is the biggest. Like the whole idea that there's a there's an asteroid the size of Texas about to hit the Earth. Well, the biggest asteroid isn't even half the size of Texas. And that's in our solar system. <laughs> so yeah, there is there is no chance that that's going to happen. And then the fact that they said a comet actually collided with the asteroid to send it out, out of its orbit and heading towards Earth, that's not going to happen. There is no way that there's a comet could build up that much momentum to shift uh, an asteroid that size. Off its gravitational field. Yeah, yeah, it's what? not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and then another one is... Uh, Whenever they said that if this if this asteroid hits the Earth, it's going to be like ten thousand nuclear explosions. Actually, they underestimated it'd be a hundred times that. It would split the Earth in half. <laughs> and as well, the fact that they even managed to land a rover on the asteroid is completely impossible because there is not enough gravity on an asteroid that size or going that speed. There would be literally nothing. You would be not be able to hold on unless you were somehow able to drill right down and catch the rover on it, something. But then as soon as you go outside, you're just going to fly away. There is very, very little gravity on an asteroid. I can tell you hate Michael Bay. Ah, oh, I despise him. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Michael Bay, for not complying to normal science. <laughs> okay, let's hear some more about really bad science in films. I was surprised to see The Matrix on the list there. 
Oh, well, well, The Matrix. It's, you know, the first film, pretty good, pretty good. Didn't like the second or third film, no. like a lot of other people, yeah. for obvious reasons. You and me both. But the main reason that The Matrix makes it onto my list of uh, science badness is because the idea that all the humans are like batteries doesn't make any sense because the amount of energy that it would take to keep the humans alive would not produce enough energy to actually sustain the robots. So it's like trying to power a car with a turbine, but also the car engine has to power the turbine. <laughs> and it's it's just, a, it's not going to happen. So are you telling me that I'm not going to be able to charge my phone in the future by plugging it into the back of my neck? Probably not. That's and a real shame. I think... I think the robots probably knew this and just got really upset that they were slaves or something for a while. Cause, yeah. Just a bit of revenge back on the humans. Probably, probably. But another one of those things as well is um, in you know any action film where there's a bad guy or a good guy that's somehow being covered in petrol and tied to a chair or whatever, and of course whoever's tied them to said chair has found them and they've uh, got a cigarette in their mouth and... They give off their cheesy one-liners and flick the cigarette into the flame, uh, into the into the petrol, and flames burst out of them. <laughs> that sounds like a pretty realistic thing. What what could possibly no. be wrong with that? Well, cigarettes can't light petrol just because they're not hot enough. A naked flame is the only thing that could light petrol. Uh, cigarettes, granted, if the if the cigarette was on fire, yeah, then then it might work, <laughs> but. If you if you smoke, you'd know that if your cigarette is on fire, it's not going to be very nice. I'd like to see this scenario in a real film. Someone's tried to deliver the <laughs> one-liner, they've thrown the cigarette, and it's just not lit. Yeah. And oh, no. look, at the, look at the henchman, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, I think that would be uh, one of those brilliant moments that you go, oh, science. <laughs> yeah. Well, another one as well is actually, um, have you ever thought about becoming invisible? Would you really like that? Do you think? Um, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Well, I, I don't. I don't want to say yes and end up <laughs> kind of tied into something now. Well, see, the thing is, if you became invisible, you'd be completely blind. Why is that? Well, basically, the whole idea of vision it comes from the ability to see light and light reflecting from you essentially, and it goes into your retinas and it's read by your retinas. So the light has to stop at you or else you, the light photons will just pass straight through you, so they won't be able to go into your eyes. So if the light stops at your eyes, it means that you won't be invisible, but if the light passes through, you won't be able to see anything, so you'll just see blackness. This changes absolutely everything. I know, the standard right? question, what super like power would you have? I don't yeah. think... <laughs> wow. I, I, I don't want to be invisible no more. So that's one thing that I'm going to say as well. Like, if you stop time... If you could stop time, how would you breathe? Surely you'd freeze to death and things like that. Like how? Yeah. Don't get me started on this because we could <laughs> go along for a whole episode about it. Well, I know about your disdain for the latest uh, Godzilla film, and I just wanted to point out that Godzilla is physically impossible as a creature. Because, really, really? Yeah. I'm sure I saw like uh, <laughs> just a couple of Godzillas down the road just today. Not quite. Not quite. Well, the, see, the thing is, he's too big, and he breaks the square cubed law, which says for every time you get a little bit taller, you gain twice the you gain twice the size, length, and width. But this also cubes your weight and your strength. So if you're say three times as tall, you'll be uh, twenty seven times as strong and twenty seven times as heavy. So what happens is Godzilla, he's what we'll say we'll say he's a hundred times the the size of an average lizard <laughs> and that means he's 3000 times his weight 3000 times his strength but because of the weight he would actually collapse in on himself because his strength won't be able to cope with the added weight because eventually the weight of his body will overtake his strength and the fact as well he would have to consume a lot of food and a lot of oxygen and there probably isn't enough oxygen in the general area around where he would be breathing to actually survive he would have to take like 30 breaths a second <laughs> so um, yeah godzilla is an impossibility just because of his ginormous size i wish the film was an impossibility i really really do <laughs>